Heavenly Father, O Lord God of hosts, who is mighty like you, O Lord, your faithfulness surrounds you. Blessed is the one who trusts in you, Lord, O God of hosts. Lord, we praise you for this afternoon, Lord. Lord, for this sweet hour of prayer that you've given us to come into your presence, Lord. Lord, just to close ourselves off from the world for this one hour and to sit at your feet, Lord Jesus, to bask in your presence, God. Lord, just to feel your love wash over us, Lord, as you minister to our heart through your word. Lord, it is a light to our path and a lamp to our feet. But Lord, you want to use it as a bright light, Lord, beaming into our hearts to show us, Lord, those areas that you want to touch and purify and refine. Lord, you're making your bride beautiful in this season, Lord. You're awakening in us, Lord, to deeper love with you and an understanding of our own sinfulness and weakness. And in your grace, Lord, you're wanting to restore us, Lord, to lost power. And this is where we come, Lord, to your feet, Lord, to repent. Lord, to rid us of those weights, Lord, that are holding us down, keeping us back from running, Lord, the race before us with such freedom and joy and expectation in front of us. So, Lord, we just pray right now, Lord, that we would just settle ourselves in your presence, God, that you would silence every distracting noise so we can hear your voice speaking love over us, that we can hear your voice of discipline, chastisement, and be able to address those areas in our life, Lord, that you want to refine and purify and rid us of. Lord, we praise you. Lord, for your great goodness, your tender mercies, and your love. We are before you, Lord Jesus, in your mighty name. Amen. Well, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, it's good to see you all here this afternoon for our hour together before the Lord as we bring our hearts before him in this hour of repentance. Thank you, everyone who's joining us online and our sweet um, remnant at Calvary Chapel, Chino Hills, standing in the gap. We love you all, and we just love how the Lord's knitting our hearts together in this season. Um, and I love this noon hour. It's just such a beautiful time to really get into the deep of that beautiful river and fountain the Lord is open to us and just come to that fountain of cleansing and be washed. And um, the Lord just has so much he's speaking to us in this season. Um, just as he was speaking to his people Israel through the prophet Haggai, that was our devotion this morning from Haggai chapter 2. The, you know, we, we know from the story that um, the desire of Israel was to be like all the other nations around them. They wanted to have a king. They forgot that they were not like any other nation, that God had set them apart. He had chosen them to be his special treasure above all the nations of the earth. But they had become enticed by the world around them, and they just wanted to look like the other nations and have a king. And as a result, they experienced famine and poverty. Um, their spiritual poverty resulted in their national poverty. Their sin brought them great destruction. And as we see in this story in, in Haggai 2, the Lord had to remind them um, to, re to get to the work of rebuilding the temple. This is what Haggai was sent to, to stir up the people to get back to work. And the Lord tells them, he says to them, you know, I'm here with you, so be strong. Do not fear, do the work. And the people were complaining. They were using what they had to build their own houses, and they were neglecting the house of God. And so it was in shambles. And the Lord says to them in verse 9, um, you know, that the, the glory of the Lord is going to be greater in those latter days. So he's giving them hope for the future and to stir them up to build. And he says in the verse before it, the silver is mine and the gold is mine, says the Lord of hosts. So this fear of theirs that they didn't have the necessary provision to do what God was calling them for, the Lord's like, I own it all. I provide it all. I'm going to provide it for you. And... Um, they had to be repent, you know, that they were not depending on God as they formerly had. 
He had so much in store for them if only they would just repent and come to him and, and find that lost power, restore them to that strength that they needed. He wanted to forgive them. He wanted to cleanse them. He wanted to put them back to work. And it's the same with us, you know, as, as the church. Um, you know, God has chosen his church. We, we, as the living stones, we're the temple of God. He's chosen us to build up his kingdom in this world. And as he did for Israel, the church has been separated from the world. It's been set apart from the world for his special service. We're supposed to be salt in the world and the light of the world, you know, to add flavor to this very tasteless society that we live in that's so immoral and corrupt and to bring light where there's nothing but darkness. And in order to do that, though, the church, it's vital that we be pure. Our purity as the body of Christ is so important to God's work in the world. And we don't, we're not to allow ourselves to be contaminated by the filth of this world. Our hearts and our hands are meant to be pure for the sacred work of God's work that he has us doing here. You know, the world is drawn to the church. They're, it's drawn to Christ. When we present that pure, untainted, undiminished view of the Lord... But when we live like the world, when we're acting just like it in all of its immorality, its sin, its filth, its tastelessness, we're not very attractive. And we do not present a very attractive view of our Lord. And, and we know from Isaiah 53, it's like there was nothing, no, there's no beauty in him to attract us to him. But we should be doing that as the bride of Christ. We should be presenting our bridegroom for the whole world to be just desiring him and longing for the one that our heart loves. We are in the world as the body of Christ. We're his messengers of peace. We are his ambassadors of reconciliation to the world to bring people to himself. And so this noon hour is an opportunity for us to empty our lives of everything that's impure and polluted and putrid so that we can be a vessel in which the Lord can pour himself into the purity, the perfection of Jesus Christ, all the beauty of his character, in order that when we go out into the world, we're able to spread the fragrance of Christ to the world and not some polluted distortion of what that looks like. It should be pure. And so this afternoon, we're going to come before the Lord and this beautiful opportunity to repent uh, and confess our sins before the Lord. And some of the things we really need to, to look at is, you know, Israel, their desire was not for the Lord. Their desire was to have a king other than the Lord. And he calls himself the desire of nations. That's one of his, his titles. So we need to ask ourselves, is he the desire of our heart? Or what is it that we really desire? What is it we really long for? What do we really want in our life? Is it the Lord or not? Because it's, if it's not the Lord, we like Israel. God's jealous for us. He's zealous for us. And he's going to come after us with a vengeance. And he's going to rid us of all those other affections and things that we turn our heart to other than him. So we need to repent. If he's not our one true desire if he's not preeminent in our life, as something else is, we need to confess that, own up to it. We need to repent of neglecting the care of the house of God, that our homes, our lives, our businesses, our little kingdoms are more important than the kingdom of God. Are we busy about our Father's business? Do we want to see the kingdom of God advanced in this world? Do we care that there are people all around us perishing? Are we the least bit concerned that there are family members and our neighbors? Are we going to be busy about our father's business? And we need to confess and repent of neglecting spiritual things. I mean, even just prayer. How little we pray. And because we're not doing these very important spiritual disciplines that are so important to the life of the spirit in us studying and meditating and reading upon the word of God and, and, and spending this time in prayer. 
It's causing us to be weak and feeble as a body. We're weakening the entire body of Christ. And so just as he says here in Haggai 2, he says that once more in a little while I will shake heaven and earth. He says, I'm going to shake all nations and they shall come to the desire of all nations and I will fill this temple with glory. He's going to do that for his church. For each one of us, he wants to shake our worlds. He wants to shake us up and wake us up so that he can rid us of all those other things that are hurting us and harming us, so that he can fill us with his glory, and that we can go out and glorify him by others seeing our good works and our love for him. You know, the world today, um, they may not acknowledge that Jesus Christ is the peace that all the world is, I mean, all the world wants peace. But it's Jesus Christ who is the Prince of Peace. And one day they're going to bow before him. There's going to be a time when all nations will come to him. It's going to be a glorious time. But right now he's the glory of the church. He's here with us. His presence is here with us. He is our King He is our head, and he is our crown. He is the fountain, the foundation, the center, and the source of all our power. I mean, even our theme verse for this season from Psalm 46 says that there's a river whose stream shall make glad the city of God, the holy place where the Most High dwells. God is within her, and she shall not fail. God will help her at the break of day. God is within us to help us so that we will not fail, but that we'll be strengthened to do the work that he's calling us to do. So this afternoon, let's just go before the Lord with humble hearts, sincere hearts, desiring for him to truly do that cleansing, purifying work in our lives and in the body of Christ so that we can show forth his glory and provide a pathway for others to come to him. Let's go before him with a spirit of repentance and humble ourselves before him and pray. You're welcome to come up to the altar. If you feel led to come up here and kneel and pray, and you can use this microphone or come to the one in the center and pray. But let's lift up our voices together. For those online, whenever there's those moments of silence, use that time to allow the Holy Spirit to search your heart. And be willing to be honest with the things that the Lord is putting his finger on in your life. And let's let him have his way with us. He deserves full possession of his people, and we should hold nothing back. Let's go before him. Oh, Lord, you are near to all those who call upon you, who call upon you in truth. Lord, you will fulfill the desires of those who fear you, and you will hear their cry and save them, Lord Jesus. Lord, we are before you. Our heart's cry is to honor you with our lives. Lord, we want nothing to hinder our closest communion with you. Lord, we know there are those things that are blocking the way from us having that deep abiding intimacy with you that you desire of your people. So, Lord, search our hearts. Try us. Know our anxieties. See if there is any wicked way in us and lead us in the way of everlasting, Lord. We are before you. Walking in the ways of your law, law, O Lord, we are waiting on you. It is your name and renown that are the desire of our hearts. Be glorified in this time of confession and repentance, Lord. Our hearts are before you.
Behold, you desire truth in the inward parts, and in the hidden part you will make us to know wisdom. Lord, we rend our hearts and not our garments. We ask that you would remove from us everything that is sin and self and flesh, all that is worldly and carnal. We no longer want to be children, Lord. We want to be mature, no longer drinking the milk, but eating the meat, the rich portion that you have in yourself for us. So let nothing stand in the way of our experiencing the joy and power of your presence, Lord. Would you forgive us, Lord, of our, our hard hearts, our unkind spirit, anything that is in us that is insensitive to the suffering of others or causes the suffering of others, Lord. Forgive us for our attachment to this world, from all of our jealousies and envies, our arguments and dissensions, our complaining, everything and anything that dishonors your holy name, Lord Jesus. We long to be true and upright and pure and holy because without holiness, no one will see God. Have your way with us, we pray, Lord Jesus. mercy on me, God, according to your loving kindness, according to the multitude of your tender mercies, blot out my transgressions, wash me thoroughly from my iniquity, and cleanse me from my sin, for I acknowledge my transgressions, and my sin is always before me. Against you and you only have I sinned and done this evil in your sight, that you may be found just when you speak and blameless when you judge. Behold, I was brought forth in iniquity, and in sin my mother conceived me. Behold, you desire truth in the inward parts, and in the hidden part you will make me to know wisdom. Purge me with hyssop, and I shall be clean. Wash me, and I shall be whiter than snow. Make me hear joy and gladness, that the bones you have broken may rejoice. Hide your face from my sins and blot out all my iniquities. Create in me a clean heart, O God, and renew a steadfast spirit within me. Do not cast me away from your presence and do not take your Holy Spirit from me. Restore me to the joy of your salvation and uphold me by your generous spirit. Then I will teach transgressors your way and sinners shall be converted to you. My tongue shall sing aloud of your righteousness. O Lord, open my lips, and my mouth shall show forth your praise. For you do not desire sacrifice, or else I would give it. You do not delight in burnt offering. The sacrifices of God are a broken spirit, a broken and a contrite heart. These, O God, you will not despise. Ecclesiastes 12, 11. 
The words of wise men are like goads, and the masters of these collections are like are like well-driven nails that are given by one shepherd. But beyond this, my son, be warned, the writing of many books is endless, and excessive devotion to books is wearying to the body. The conclusion, when all has been heard, is fear God and keep his commandments, because this applies to every person. For God will bring ever act to judgment everything which is hidden, where it, whether it is good or evil. Dear Lord, I just thank you, Lord, for being our daddy and loving us, Lord, and for being such a wonderful father, Lord, to, to love us unconditionally, Lord. And I just lift up, Lord, just all the times, almost every day, Lord, that I look to other strategies, other things other than you, Lord. Lord, just, Lord, there's a lot of good things out there, but Lord, you are the only good thing, Lord. You are the truth, and Lord, your Holy Spirit in us, Lord, just whispering and trying to gain our attention, Lord, is, is what we need to be listening to, Lord, and I just ask for forgiveness for not staying on your path, to not listening, to not following everything that you're constantly trying to get me to do, Lord. And, Lord, our f our flesh is wicked, Lord, and just is so self-oriented, Lord. And I just ask you to help me, help your church, Lord, to die to our flesh and to put on Christ, Lord. And, Lord, thank you for the forgiveness we have that's endless and, and unconditional, Lord. But, Lord, just... I just ask that you would just help me, help us, Lord, to be obedient in your calling, to be obedient in your commandments, to be obedient in in fearing you, Lord, and not just kind of writing um, the wonderful grace that you give us, which we're so thankful for, Lord. But, Lord, just you've got such a much better path, Lord, if we would just be obedient and just listen to you and follow, Lord. And thank you for your word that you have given us to to follow. And just, Lord, help your church to do that and to be in the word, ingesting the word, and just growing in you. In Christ's name, amen. Lord, you say in your word, if my people who are called by my name will humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then I will hear from heaven. I will forgive their sin and I'll heal their land. Lord, as you gave this promise to our brother Solomon <clears throat> for the children of Israel, Lord. We are now your people as well. We're grafted in. And Lord, we pray that you would make this scripture, this thought, Lord, a reality in all of our hearts and minds as the church. We pray, Lord, that you would indeed forgive us of our sins. Cleanse us, Lord, from all wickedness. We pray, Lord, that you would indeed Give us opportunities, Lord, personally, every day. Prompt us with your Holy Spirit to spend time with you in your word. And, Lord, we would act upon what we hear, what we see in your word. We thank you, Lord, that you came down and showed us. You fleshed it out. You showed us what it looks like, Lord, to live a life of righteousness and goodness. And, Lord, we love that you've done it. You didn't just say it from the high lofty heavens, Lord, but you decided to come down and show us what it looks like. Thank you for that, Lord. I pray, Father, that as we make you Lord of our life every day, that you'd give us opportunity, Lord, to serve you and your church. Give us opportunity, Lord, to go out and tell others about you, Lord, as you commanded us to do. 
You said in your word, Lord, that we are to go out into all the nations and make disciples. And Lord, we would baptize them in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. We pray, Father, that you would indeed give us that opportunity often. Lord, that you would use us. Lord, as you said to Isaiah, Lord, as he was praying there in Isaiah 6, whom, whom will we send? And Isaiah steps up, Lord, Lord, send me. Send me, Lord. Send your church. Use us, Father. We pray, Father, that you would cleanse our hearts and minds, Lord, of all that is not of you. That you would heal our families, Lord. As I'm thinking of that, Lord, I pray for my daughter now, Lord. As she's in a time of rebellion, Lord, I pray that you would give her a distaste for the things of this world. Give her a distaste, Lord, of sin. That is, Lord, she's experienced what it looks like to live in a family that loves you. That, Lord, you'd bring that back to remembrance to her often. And, Lord, that she would come to repentance, Lord, and you would use this time in her life, as you have with so many of us, as a time she can show, Lord, that amazing transformation, that miracle, Lord, you've done in all of our lives. You would do it in hers. And, Father, she would use this as a testimony to others about how you step into men's lives and you change us, Lord. You do the work. Father, I pray that you would go do that work in her even now. I pray these things in Jesus' name. Lord, you are a consuming fire, Elkanah. Yours is a jealous love. You want the full, undivided attention of your children. You will not share your glory with another. You will not compromise your holiness. You are absolute moral perfection. And you're going to attack that thing that seeks to destroy what you have created. Your love, O oh God, is a protecting and a perfecting love. And you've given us this time to come out from that cold, dark world into your bright, brilliant, warm light. To ignite that flame of holy love in our hearts. And Lord, you give us, Lord, a taste of what it means to have that jealous love when our children are out in the world as prodigals, running from so great a love as yours, Lord. How our hearts long for them, but we understand your love in a way we never did before. That deep, jealous, consuming love. Lord, forgive us where our hearts are not entirely set upon you. As you have set your heart entirely upon us, you've set us as a seal upon your heart and as a seal upon your arm. For love is as strong as death, 
and jealousy as cruel as the grave. Its flames are a flame of fire, a most vehement flame. And many waters cannot quench that love, nor can floods drown it, O Lord. We want to be drowned in the sea of your love, and that nothing, Lord, from us would ever pollute that pure flow from your fountain, Lord Jesus. Thank you that you use these trials and tribulations in our life to show us the depths and widths and lengths of your love, to show the fiery wrath of yours that comes after the thing that wants to destroy those you love. Empty us of anything that diminishes your beauty, that robs you of your holiness and your glory, we pray. Seek the Lord while he may be found. Call upon him while he is near. Let the wicked forsake his way and the unrighteous man his thoughts. Let him return to the Lord and he will have mercy on him and to our God, for he will abundantly pardon. I know all the things you do that you are neither hot nor cold. I wish you were one or the other. But since you are like lukewarm water, neither hot nor cold, I will spit you out of my mouth. You say, I am rich. I have everything I want. I don't need a thing. And you don't realize that you are wretched and miserable and poor and blind and naked. So I advise you to buy gold from me, gold that has been purified by fire, then you'll be rich. Also buy white garments for me so that you will not be shamed by your nakedness and ointment for your eyes so you will be able to see. I correct and discipline everyone I love. So be diligent and turn from your indifference. Look, I stand at the door and knock. If you hear my voice and open the door, I will come in and we will share a meal together as friends. Those who are victorious will sit with me on my throne, just as I was victorious and sat with my father on his throne. Anyone with ears to hear must listen to the Spirit and understand what he is saying to the churches. Father God, forgive us for our indifference and our complacency, Lord. It's sickening. And Lord, on this very day, Father, Halloween, Lord, I just especially come to you and just ask for your forgiveness as so much sin is, is happening on this day, especially, Lord. And I just pray for your protection, Lord. I pray for your mercy on us, Lord, as just we're a nation of lukewarm, indifferent people, Lord, who for the sake of candy or knocking on doors, Lord, will forsake you, Lord, and I just pray, Lord, that we will humble ourselves and, and realize that we don't sacrifice for you, Lord, that we, that we don't know you as we should, and I just pray, Lord, that we will have a revival, Lord, and that we will become people of prayer and people who understand you in a deeper, more intimate way, Lord, and I just pray that you would reveal yourself to us and Lord, that we would humble ourselves, Lord, and we would just come to you and pray, Father, and that you would just hear our cry and forgive us. And we pray, Lord, for just our nation and this upcoming election, Father. And we know that so much rests on this, Lord, but we also know that you're 
in control, Lord, and, and um, you go before us. And we do pray, Lord, that if it be your will, that we could have a few years of reprieve, Lord, and that uh, you would just hear our cries and have mercy on us, Lord, for our complacency. And I just pray that the people would wake up, Lord, that we would wake up and, and see our need for you.
We have sinned and done wrong. We have been wicked and rebelled. We have turned away from your commands and laws, Lord. You are righteous, but this day we are covered with shame. The Lord our God is merciful and forgiving. Even though we have rebelled against him, all this disaster has come upon us. Yet we have not sought the favor of the Lord our God by turning from our sins and giving attention to your word. The Lord our God is righteous in everything he does. Yet we have not obeyed him. Wash yourselves and make yourselves clean. Put away the evil of your doings from before my eyes. Cease to do evil. Learn to do good. Seek justice. Rebuke the oppressor. Defend the fatherless. And plead for the widow. Come now. Let us reason together, says the Lord. Though your sins are as scarlet, they shall be as white as snow. And though they are red like crimson, they shall be as wool. If you are willing and obedient, you shall eat the good of the land. But if you refuse and rebel, you shall be devoured by the sword. The mouth of the Lord has spoken. O oh Lord, we want nothing more than to feel your presence, Lord. We need you to come with your sword and kill all the influence of the world in our lives. You've washed us in the fountain filled with your blood, and we're clean, but now we need to be washed from the defilement in the water of your word. Give us clean hands, clean hearts, and clean feet again, Lord. They get so dirty from walking around in this world, and your cleansing will greatly refresh us. It will prepare us for the most intimate, abiding fellowship with you. That's why the priests washed themselves before they went into the holy place. Oh, Lord, we don't want to just come into the holy place. We want to come into the holiest of all. Behind that veil that you rent by your death to the mercy seat that you sprinkled with your own blood. We want to come close to you, right into that bright Shekinah light that shines between the wings of the cherubim and speak to you as a friend. We are yours and you are ours, God. We want to be united in your battle, but we're weak and powerless right now, and so we pray, help us, God. Bring us under the shadow of your wings, Jehovah Sebaoth, and help us, sanctify us. Holy Spirit, come and saturate every faculty of ours and subdue every passion and bring everything into obedience in Christ. We want you to have full possession of us because if we're left to ourselves, we are just wicked. So take our hearts, our heads, our hands, our feet, and use them all for your glory and for the blessing of the people all around us, Lord. May everything we do make this world a better place before we leave it, Lord. Help us not to contribute to the evil in it by the things that we do. We want to contribute to the good that is in it, Lord. Send forth your light and your truth, Lord. Help us to be loosely attached to things below. Turn the hearts of your people back to your word again, Lord Jesus. Our hearts are heavy because so many are departing the faith. Please bring the wandering back, Lord. We ask you, the one who walks between the seven golden candlesticks, to trim our flames and pour forth the oil so we will shine brightly. We love you, Lord Jesus. We want to bring you glory with our lives. Cleanse us and purge us of everything that hinders us from bringing you the highest glory that is due your name.
which I had died. I saw the Lord sitting on the throne, high and lifted up, and the train of his robe filled the temple. Above it stood seraphim. Each one had six wings. With two he covered his face, with two they covered their feet, and with two they flew. And one cried to another and said, Holy, holy, holy is the Lord of hosts. The whole earth is full of his glory. Lord, you are indeed holy. Set apart, Lord, from all of this universe which you created. Lord, you are all-knowing, all-powerful, good, righteous, just. Your thoughts are so far above our thoughts, Lord, we can't possibly conceive of them. Lord, your power is so great, you simply speak a word and the universe comes into existence. Lord, you set your word out that we have the opportunity to read it daily. Line by line, precept by precept. And Lord, you've hidden gems of gold, silver, diamonds, spiritual, spiritual diamonds, Lord, and gold. That if we simply seek out in your word, Lord, you will show us the very mysteries of God. blow our hearts and minds away, Lord. You will do exceedingly, abundantly above all we could ever ask or think. Lord, I pray that your people would spend time in your word every day throughout this nation, throughout this world. Hearing from you, Lord, what you desire to tell them today. What you desire them to do today. Lord, we desire to be men and women, Lord, who abide in you. As we abide, Lord, and ask you, Lord, what do you think? As often as possible, Lord, what, what do you think I should do? Lord, that as your people depend upon you, Lord, and pray to you, that you would share in that still, small voice what it is you want us to do, Lord, that next step. Guide and direct your people, Lord, and in all of us being guided and directed by you, Lord, that you would change this nation. Father, as we're coming upon an election, Lord, that your people would stand up. They would take the right, Lord, that was given to us by our ancestors and pray, and pray Lord, and just vote. We pray, Lord, that, that if it be your will, Lord, you'd give us a reprieve, Father, from just the wickedness, Lord, that finds itself replete throughout our nation. Lord, that you would indeed have, if it be your will, Lord, Trump be elected. And that he would stand up for righteousness sake. That he, Lord, would bow his knee before you and make you his Lord. And that in that, Father, you would lead this nation, Lord, according to your will. That you would destroy the wickedness, Lord, that has overtaken so many, Lord. That cult of death that has taken over so much of the media of the people, Lord, that you would defeat that, that you would indeed, Lord, be the Lord of hosts that we read about throughout the book of Isaiah, the Lord of angels, Lord, the Lord of God's armies, and you would send them, Lord, down to defeat the enemy.
The heart is deceitful above all things and desperately wicked. Who can know it? I, the Lord, search the heart. I test the mind, even to give every man according to his ways, according to the fruit of his doings. A glorious high throne from the beginning is the place of our sanctuary. O Lord, the hope of Israel, all who forsake you shall be ashamed. Those who depart from me shall be written in the earth because they have forsaken the Lord, the fountain of living waters. Heal me, O Lord, and I shall be healed. Save me, and I shall be saved, for you are my praise. Indeed, they say to me, where is the word of the Lord? Let it come now. Blessed is he whose transgression is forgiven, whose sin is covered. Blessed is the man to whom the Lord does not impute iniquity and in whose spirit there is no deceit. When I kept silent, my bones grew old through my groaning all the day long. For day and night your hand was heavy upon me. My vitality was turned into the drought of summer. Then I acknowledged my sin to you and my iniquity I have not hidden. I said, I will confess my transgressions to the Lord, and you forgave the iniquity of my sin. For this cause, everyone who is godly shall pray to you in a time when you may be found. Surely in a flood of great waters, they shall not come near him. You are my hiding place. You shall preserve me from trouble. You shall surround me with songs of deliverance. Many sorrows shall be to the wicked. But he who trusts in the Lord, mercy shall surround him. Be glad in the Lord and rejoice, you righteous, and shout for joy, all you upright in heart. O Lord, 
how grateful we are, Lord, that if we confess our sins, you are faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Thank you, Lord, for opening this fountain of cleansing in this season that we can come before you, Lord, and find healing we so desperately need. You are so gracious and merciful toward us, Lord. We're so thankful, Lord, that it's your kindness that leads us to repentance. Oh, Lord, in you we put our trust. Let us never be ashamed. We love you, Lord Jesus, and we thank you for this time in your presence. In your mighty name we pray. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you his peace. Blessings today. I pray you go out in the joy of the Lord, feeling released like calves, released from the stall, just joyful in his love and forgiveness and compassion and mercy in our lives. I look forward to seeing you back here at 6 o'clock tonight. And I do want to remind you that we are going to have that blessing of being able to close out our 21 days together on the 21st day, Sunday, um, in the evening. We will have a 6 o'clock prayer service on Sunday um, where we can all just come together and just pour out our hearts before the Lord in the sweet season that he's given us, knowing our prayers will be heard, and just to receive that blessing together that he's given us. So go out in the joy of the Lord today. Be blessed. I will see you tonight at 6.